Hi everybody, this is Doug Keller with Yoga U coming to you with a tutorial on working with the hips in seated forward bends, which present a particular challenge to people that are tight in the hamstrings or also a little bit less than strong in the lower back. What we typically find in a seated forward bend, I'll take Upavista Konasana as an example, is when the inner thighs, the adductors, or the hamstrings are tight, it tends to encourage the pelvis to tilt backwards and the legs to turn out. That tends to throw us back into the lower back, weakening the muscles of the lower spine, making it all the more difficult to get the pelvis to tilt forward. Because if the forward bend is going to happen, the pelvis has to move first before the rest of the body. Otherwise, we get stuck reaching the upper body forward, and the further we reach forward, the more we fall backwards. In working with these forward bends, it's certainly okay to sit up a little bit higher on the blanket, or for example, up on a block. That elevates the hips some. What it does do is it puts the knees up in space, which makes the legs tighten a little bit because they feel unsupported. So if you do work this way, it's good to have a couple of blankets rolled up thick enough that you can put them underneath the knees and feel that the legs are supported for the legs to have something to push into. For what we're going to do today, this isn't entirely necessary, but often when we start up on a block, we want to have some support to the knees and still find the same tilt to the hips. The challenge in the seated forward bend is to get the hips to move. And when the legs are straight, there's a pull through the hamstrings that tends to tilt the pelvis backwards, and so it's not really possible to get the hips to fold. The secret for getting the hamstrings to work is to understand they're a two-joint muscle. Hamstrings cover over the knees, and they control bending the knees. So when you contract the hamstring, it actually makes your knee bend by engaging right here. The hamstrings also attach to your sit bones, and when they contract, they extend the hip, or in other words, when you're walking, they take your leg back behind you as you walk. If the hamstring is tight, it's pulling on both ends, and the more you try to tilt the pelvis, the more you can't extend at the hip, and the more tightness you feel at the back of the knee. We want to get the sit bones to release, enough to get the pelvis to tilt, and if the legs are straight, that usually doesn't happen very easily. So we're going to bend the knees. And as you bend the knees, this allows you to roll the thighs in so the knees point straight up. And now as you touch the backs of the hamstrings, you can feel the hamstrings just above the knee and feel how as you very gently press the heels down and pull the heels towards you, bending the knees some more, you actually activate the hamstrings above the knees but at the same time, it releases the hamstrings at the sit bones, making it a little bit easier to get the pelvis to move. So the whole point is, as you drag with your heels, you get that forward tilt to the pelvis. Once you get that tilt, then you can start to work with stretching the legs out as long as it doesn't make the spine relax or drop backwards once again. So we'll bend the knees, rotate the thighs in, pressing the heels down, drag the heels towards the sit bones and see how that makes space for the pelvis to start to move forward. That's the first step of the forward bend. And as you work with it, you can, even with the hips on the floor, work with the blankets underneath the knees so that as you tilt forward, you support with the hands, not allowing the body to round forward, and then start to press the knees into the blankets as you slide out through the heels feeling how that begins to stretch the hamstrings. When blankets aren't there, people get ambitious and they try to press the knees all the way down towards the floor and end up undoing all the work that they just did. You will find when you turn the thighs in and press with the feet, it creates a certain tightening at the tops of the hips here. These are hip flexors, including the quadricep and also tensor fasciolata. To get that kind of bunching and pressure out, you can add the element of putting a belt across the feet. Now you have to narrow the feet a little bit to make space. Now you do the previous actions, press through the heels, rotate the thighs in, 
but also push the feet out against the belt so that you feel the outer hips activate as if the thighs are pressing apart. Thighs rotate in, knees pointing up, heels press, feet press out against the belt, and then to move forward, bend the knees to drag your heels towards your hips and see how that gives you space to tilt forward without collapsing in the upper body. Spine stays straight. Once you find the stretch, then as you press the feet out against the belt, you can start to straighten the legs. To go a little bit further, bend, roll in, abduct out, drag the heels to draw yourself a little bit further, then you can start to stretch out. You work progressively, even with the hands to the little toe side of the feet, abducting, pressing the thighs out against the hands as you go further into the forward bend. It's that little action of dragging that releases the sit bones and then extending to stretch the hamstrings at the backs of the knees. It's working the energy of the muscles to start to release the hamstrings, bringing you into a deeper forward bend. So I hope this has been helpful as a way to work with the hamstrings to facilitate the tilt of the hips. And you can start to incorporate that into your seated forward bend practice. Even when you do one leg at a time, like Janashashasana, where the knee tends to be up a little bit, you can support it with the knee. Again, to bend forward, I bend the knee, center the leg, drag with the heel, pull the heel towards me to help me to get the hip to tip forward. And then once you got that forward tilt, start to stretch the leg out, bend and drag, stretch out, often supporting that front knee so that you can feel a stretch of the hamstring when you have something to push into, but not so much that it creates a pulling in the lower back. In any case, press, drag, tilt, and then stretch. So take that into your forward bend practice, and I hope it proves beneficial to you. Thanks for joining me.